If you've just unboxed your brand new Xtool F2 or you're thinking of buying one, this video is gonna walk you through the exact next steps you need to take. This won't be a technical deep dive or a full review. It's simply the things I wish someone had told me when I first got started. My name's Chris and I've been using Xtool lasers for well over two years now. My first was the Xtool F1 and now I've got my hands on the Xtool F2. I've been having so much fun with it. I absolutely love it. And I'm here to help you guys along for the ride and show you exactly how to get the most out of your laser as soon as possible. So without further ado, let me get straight into the essentials of what you need to do to hit the ground running. We're gonna get straight on to safety, the most crucial element of owning any laser. So with the F2, when the shield is open, it becomes a class four laser. It contains a blue diode, which is 15 watts, and also a five watt infrared. Infrared is invisible to the eye, so when it's on, you won't actually see it, but it can cause damage to your eye. The blue diode light, however, is very bright, and you will notice straight away if it's on. So the first thing we need to talk about is eye protection. So without going into too much detail, what I will tell you is both types of lasers have a different wavelength number, so that wavelength penetrates things in different ways. So what you need to do is, the first thing you need to do is order yourself a pair of safety glasses, and mine, you probably won't see it, but if you look up there, it tells you the frequencies it protects you from. That's critical because the diode laser has a frequency of 455 Nm, and Nm stands for nanometers, and the infrared has a frequency of 1064 nanometers. So whichever safety glasses you go for has to block out those two wavelengths. That is critical. And check my description if you want recommendations. I'll show you where I link these, but you're under no obligation to buy them. It's just to give you an idea of what you're looking for. Now the other safety aspect to bear in mind is this little beauty right here or this little beauty right here. And that is extraction and ventilation. So when you're burning things, when you're laser engraving things, they, they micro burn things. You get tiny particles, you get smoke in the air, you get noxious smokes, you get all of these things. So it's critical that if you're using this inside, you ventilate safely. So there's two ways to do it. So this comes with your F2 and it plugs straight into the back. I'll show you that in a minute. So you can either vent straight out to a window and it will expand and just put it out of a window and the fan on the actual F2 will pull those fumes through and the smoke. That's option one. Option two is get yourself some kind of extraction unit. This is the Xtool air purifier that is built for the Xtool F1 and F2, but they also do the AP2, which is a big robust unit, which is made for the more bigger units like the P3 or the F1 Ultra or the F2 Ultra, but it works with this. And the beauty of those is they draw out those fumes and those particles and they filter them. But either way, it is critical that you make sure you ventilate. So make sure you pay that in mind and let's move on. So you've heard me talking about diode and infrared lasers. You're probably wondering what the heck are they and what do they do? Well, let me give you a very quick introduction, okay? So the way I like to look at diode and infrared lasers, bar the actual wavelength difference, is one is really, really good at burning or engraving organic materials. The other is much better on non-organic materials. However, there are some materials that cross over. So let's talk about the diode laser first, okay? That is a blue laser that ultimately burns things. It burns wood, it burns leather. It's really good for marking materials. So if you've got key rings like this or leather fobs like this, a diode laser is excellent for doing it. It also works on metals and it's great at burning off the actual anodized coating. However, it doesn't get a nice contrasting mark sometimes. That being said, that's where the infrared, the IR laser comes in. You may also hear fiber lasers mentioned. They are very similar, but they're different as well. So you get things like metal business cards, you know, anodized metals, as well as levers as well. That's the kind of crossover zone. There's levers that can be engraved by both. Also things like tumblers, plastics, those kind of materials react really well to the infrared laser. The infrared laser is really good at taking like the color out of things, the pigment out of things. That's the predominant difference between them, but easy guide, wood and leather, diode, metal and plastic, infrared. Let me explain the accessories that come with this. So you'll realize this plate here 
is removable from the base of the F2. So one of the things that made the XTOR F1 so amazing was this removable base plate. It adds so much versatility because basically what you can do is you can lift up your machine put it onto any surface and engrave directly onto it. So that's great. Another great thing about having a remo removable base plate is you can also fit your own jigs in it. And that is really good if you're trying to engrave it. This is a bauble, for example. But if you had this, you could design a jig and it just makes engraving that a little bit easier. So that's handy. One other thing that comes with this machine is this plate right here. This is called a cutting plate. And if you are gonna be cutting materials, make sure you have this because it allows the laser to penetrate through and not damage the base of your unit. And what I will say is ideally, have the channels running towards the fan because then as the stuff drops down, it can pull the fumes towards it instead of, if it was that way, the fumes would have nowhere to go and they'd probably come up and around and block your engraving. So there's the other thing. Moving on to the last attachment that comes with this, the L bracket. So this is a really handy, versatile thing. You'll see it has two thumb screws and on our build plate here, we have lots of threaded holes. This allows you to ultimately line up the L bracket somewhere. In this case, we're gonna just loosely put it in there. So there we go. And you can then take your item and put it in there and there you go, you're good to go. Now there are three more accessories that came with this laser. You might find yourself looking at it thinking, what do I do with these things? So we've got some grease, we've got a screwdriver, and we have a cleaning cloth. So I'll explain each of these through to you just so you know exactly when you need to use them. So we'll start off with the grease, okay? Because it's probably the most confusing one. With this laser, we have, we have a door that comes up and down, okay? And that's great, but you'll see, we have point of contact there that could over time gather stuff and start becoming a little bit problematic. So the way this grease works is you would apply it down the inside face. And let me zoom out so you can get a good idea of it in context the inside face of this and the opposite side. And then what it will do is it will allow a smooth motion of going up and down. Very important to remember that, so keep that safe. Let's move on to the screwdriver. So that'll pop out. The metal bit just goes into the end bit there. So that metal bit. And if I move around to the back of this and pop off my ventilation that I showed you how to put on a minute ago, the purpose of this screwdriver is you can see our fan outlet here has four screws. Now I will start by saying I have done a full tutorial video how to take that off and clean this. Check that out on my channel. Um, but this is provided to allow you to unscrew those four screws. This then pops off, the fan can come out and you can get an air duster and a vacuum cleaner in there to keep this clean because it does build up over time. Finally, we have our lens cleaning cloth and as the name suggests, this is to clean the lens. And let me explain the concept behind this. So, You'll come across these, these are metal business cards and these are absolutely amazing to engrave, but they've got an anodized paint finish on them. And the issue with that is when this laser engraves them, it vaporizes it and it goes everywhere. Over time, that lens right there will get a little bit dirty and it will get a buildup of small particles. Can affect your engraving quality. So you will take this and I would recommend, also I use something like this, it's a lens cleaning solution. So you would spray it and then give it a clean with a cloth like this, a microfiber cloth. A microfiber basically means particles aren't gonna come off and stay on it. And then you will keep your lens in optimum condition and you will also keep your engravings optimized. Those are the three accessories, as you can see right there. You now know what to do with them, so keep them safe because the time will come to use them. Now that we have things set up and you know what they do, I need to show you the next thing that we need to do with our laser and that's called focusing your laser. So you've got a knob on the side here, twist it clockwise to go up, anti-clockwise to go down. There is also an arrow on there. And you'll see if we look at our key ring here, the red and the blue dots are far away from each other. That means the laser lens there is not at its optimum focal height from that which means it's out of focus. We always need to join those two dots together. There you go. And we're twisting the knob, like I said, to do that. Join them together and then we know that that lens is the optimal height from the top surface. We are focused. When you first get your machine, you're gonna realize it does have Wi-Fi, but you have to have a hard USB-C connection first. 
It does come with a cable. I have a short, I have a longer cable that I use in this case because my PC is quite far away. But you basically take your USB-C, there are two ports on the side, one's got a little computer, plug it in just like so, and then plug the other end into your PC. And now we're gonna move over to setting up the laser in Xtool Studio. So you've downloaded Xtool Studio, and as you'll see, there's a lot to look at initially. This is where my tutorial videos will come in handy because I've done a full walkthrough for it. But in this case, we're just gonna to go to new project in the top right. And that is gonna bring us to a build space where it's gonna either have a machine that you already exist and have, in this case, let's assume we don't. And what we want to do is go to device settings and what it will do when you click on device settings, it will give you, hopefully, if you've got the USB-C cable plugged into your machine and your PC, it will give you that machine. So click on it once and you'll hear a beep. You probably heard it behind me. Mine's asking if I want to switch and now it's going to say we need to calibrate our machine. This bit's very important, so let's run through it. Now, one thing I will say is if you're not sure at this point and you want to be extra safe, there is a link in the bottom left there, which I'm highlighting. If you click on it, it's going to bring up a web page by Xtool, which shows you how to do it. So if you want to follow this video through first, just to make yourself extra confident, feel free to do that. And also, I need to tell you, you've got a material pack. Within that is something called scratch paper. Locate this because we're gonna be using this for the next stage. We're gonna place our scratch paper down, covering the whole bed, and then just with a couple of pieces of tape, probably worth putting them on just before. One on the top, one on the bottom. Like I said, cover the whole bed and then just apply that tape down. The point of this, we don't want it to go anywhere. So once you've done that, close the lid and then we will move on to the next bit of actually doing it. Okay, so we're gonna move on with the calibration. So click go to calibrate. And as, I just, as I've shown you in the video, put your scratch paper onto the actual bed. Ours covers the whole build plate so we will have no issues. Click next. And you're gonna hear it autofocus itself now. Once it's done that, it's asking us to close the protective cover and then press the button on the side or click engrave. So we'll do that. I've clicked engrave. I'm now going to press the button on the side. And you'll see it has drawn two marks. So we've just done that. It's just drawn our two marks. We're going to click next. And now it is going to basically ask us to calibrate. So it says calibrate the infrared laser, drag the blue light cross with square to fully overlap. So we want to zoom in as much and you can drag that around. Look at that. You can drag it. So we want to make sure we overlap this as perfectly as possible. I am trying to do this. That's pretty good. So now we'll do the red. The red is also pretty good at the bottom there. So I'm happy with that. That's good enough for me at the moment. Now we're going to click next and it's doing a fine tuning of the position up and down. And now it's going to tell us to remove the scratch paper from the base plate check the blue and red dots and make sure that they are overlapping. And then we have to say overlap or not overlap. So we'll do that now. Here we go. We're going to pop off our tape and there you go. We are looking to see if those two dots are overlapped and you'll see in this case they are. So that tells me we have successfully calibrated our camera. So I have just checked as you've seen and the, the two dots are overlapping. So we're going to click overlap. And there you go, calibration done. Let's move on to the next step. So now it's asking you to do the tutorial. Definitely run through this tutorial. It takes you through a little project. I'm not gonna go through it. I'm actually gonna take you through my own little project so that you can learn a different way to what it's showing you and maybe it'll open your eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna skip, but make sure you do it because there's never too much learning. We've done that. And now what it's saying at the top right, after Wi-Fi configuration, connect via Wi-Fi. So this is the next important part. If you want to connect via Wi-Fi, you need to click on that and it's going to ask you to try and find your Wi-Fi. That's my Wi-Fi there. I'm going to put my password in and I'm going to click next. And as you can see, it's thinking about it. It's doing something. And there you go. It's now configured so we can click connect with Wi-Fi. 
You hear the beep, that's the confirmation. Right at this point, what I would recommend doing is unplugging the USB cable. And if the light at the top right here remains green, that means you are connected via Wi-Fi. Right then, so we are connected to the Wi-Fi. Our machine is fully connected. We are good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I've set up a key ring on the actual laser engraving bed, and I am gonna click this little ruler with an A here, and what that is gonna do is auto-focus the laser. What's very critical for this is to make sure that cover is down because it needs to be dark so that it can actually allow the light to return. But what you'll see is once it's done that, it's updated a number here on the right it's 8.6 millimeters away from the surface, which is focused for the thickness of that actual pendant. So this is wood we're gonna be using the diode. And as you can see, it's updated the camera. If you wanted to adjust the position, and I will do that now. So it's a little bit wonky. If you wanna adjust it, you can just move it, close the lid back down. I'll try and get it so it's actually straight, but it's probably gonna be wonky. Then click on the camera again, and what you are gonna see, it will update the picture. There you go, as simple as that, which is really, really good. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna actually engrave something onto this as part of this intro tutorial. So let's go on here. I've got, I think it's birch plywood. We're gonna click apply. So that is the material library. It's a massive library, really, really comprehensive. Once again, check out my tutorials. I've done a really thorough deep dive into this. And once we've got that, we are happy. What we're gonna do now is we are going to move over to our elements tab here. And I'm just gonna find a nice image to do here. And I think that's quite a cool one to put on it. It's, so I, I clicked on it, it's gonna put it in there. And I'm just gonna drag it there onto that. And as you can see, this is gonna give us a good representation. My 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 actual key ring is a bit wonky here, so let's actually drag this a little bit so it maybe even lines up with it. And or we can actually just change it there. And I'm going to go to minus two maybe. And there you go. That's pretty good. So there's our key ring. Because we selected a material we're using, we can click on one click set over here, and that will give us the different kind of darknesses. You, if you click on it. It's going to automatically update the power and speed. Just click on one of them. I, I like going for the middle one sometimes. It's a safe bet. And once you've done that, we're good. The next thing you want to do, and this is all short stuff, me showing you how to get into it, is frame our actual design, okay? Click on the frame button, and you will see on here, if I pop that up, there is a box around it. That box is showing where we're going to engrave. However, if you click on it again, in the bottom right here and go to outline. You can then click on it again and it will give you an actual outline of our engraving, which is brilliant. We'll put our cover back down. We now know that is in a good position for us. We are happy. So click the framing box, turn that off. Now we're gonna click the process button. So what I will say is because we've selected the material here, you'll see it's already selected blue light. As I said earlier, the infrared laser does not work on organic materials. So click process, it's gonna tell us it's gonna take 21 seconds. We're gonna click start, it's gonna beep to confirm it has been sent to it. And before I start, there is the button on the side of the machine just, just here. Make sure you click that to start this, okay? So let me get this camera set up again. I'm gonna press it. As you can see, that has come out really nice. And look how easy that was. Okay, so that is everything gone through. And what I always try to say to people is don't overthink it. Just get yourself set up, do what I've shown you today, make sure you're safe, and I promise you everything will come so naturally. If you do want a more in-depth tutorial on Xtool Studio, check out the channel. I have got a full series from start to finish, from beginner to expert, to get you where you need to go, so check that out. Also, feel free to contact me and to join our really, really helpful F2 and F series 
Facebook groups. They are designed to share everything and we'll share our knowledge and we will always help each other. And that is what this community is all about. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if this has helped you today. Have a brilliant time getting to know and mastering your X-Tool F2 laser. Thank you for watching.